So look, if you want to grow your wealth, your income, and increase the amount of time off, then these are the shortcuts that can help. Welcome to the Wealth Creation Podcast. Welcome everybody, it's Dan Lasser today. We're running seven minutes late, my apologies. I looked down at the clock and then I realised it's seven minutes past one. Uh, welcome to the Mindset and Hustle Show. My name is Dan Latter. Thank you for joining me today. I have no idea what this is saying across my cheap uh, Primark T-shirt. Uh, I think it says Dan is awesome. I think and a great dancer too. Probably what it says. Uh, and for those listening on the podcast, I'm talking about what's on my T-shirt. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, thank you uh, for joining us once again. So in this session today, I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, about coronavirus and but more than just coronavirus like what happens if you have to have an enforced um, self-quarantine or what happens if you have to stay at home Um, you know some people are writing it off and saying well you know that's my week ruined or my day ruined or my month ruined however long you have to stay at home Uh, and then there's other people going wow brilliant I get to stay at home but obviously if you're self-employed a lot of people are panicking and that kind of thing so what can you do to make the absolute most of it? And so I just wanted to cover some of that stuff off because in my experience of hundreds of coaching clients and with social media clients, and everything that we've done for the last 20 years, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest learnings uh, around success and the lack of it is a lack of planning. And people do not plan anywhere near to the extent that they need to plan. Like, for example, we've been stocking up on items for the last couple of weeks um, because we heard about coronavirus and we're a little bit worried about it. And so we've been stocking up and and having a pantry, effectively, where we've got stuff and it's all stocked up, which is great. But what worried me beforehand was that we never really had stocks of anything. You know, we live in a just-in-time kind of world. And I was like, what if that stopped for some reason anyway? So I've always wanted to have a stock of stuff that we could survive on if, if we had to. Um, and I'm not saying I'm a prepper because I'm far, far from it, but we've all seen zombie films. We know how this stuff goes down. So we wanted to have that in place and we wanted to plan ahead. And so people call it panic buying. I call it preparation. People call you obsessed. I call it dedicated. And one person's negative word can easily be turned around into someone else's positive word. And my job is to think forward. What are the obstacles that are coming ahead of us what are the things that we need to solve so we you know in property for example we we got section 24 section 24 was a ticking time bomb Uh, this is where you can offset your uh, property uh, mortgage interest uh, relief anymore Uh, we knew that that was a ticking time bomb and it's like okay let's get rid of as much debt especially bad debt as we could and that's what we did we paid off the cards we paid off credit cards and if you're not in that position right now where you've done that like you planning ahead This is the thing that you need to be doing. People go, well, no, I don't want to pay down credit cards. I want to get investing. And it's like, dude, there's no point investing, you know, and getting a 10% return when it's costing you 20% every year on your credit cards. That's crazy. You've got to plan ahead. And I like this idea of uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. We don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But in planning and preparing, you can offset some of the obstacles that you're going to have because you, you can anticipate what are some of these obstacles going to be what if a recession comes along because of all this stuff that's going on it might not be coronavirus that gets you it could be the fact that people are staying at home and self-quarantining and uh, that we're going to hit a recession like what happens if you're in a recession and your debt to income ratio is really really high what are you going to do there and that for me isn't acceptable you know it's like something that we've got to got to be thinking about so tony walsh is just saying uh we've had a stock of non-perishable foods for some time absolutely and i, I thought it was funny because um pot noodles were like running out uh, in england now here where we are in spain all the stores are full you can get hand wash although if, hand wash is easy enough getting the antiviral hand wash just just doesn't seem to exist um but we, you know, no one seemed to be panicking. I was speaking to the chemist and it's like some people come in for nose masks and that kind of thing. But we should all be planning and preparing. And if nothing bad happens, then great. You've just got a month's worth of toilet roll. Awesome. We now don't have to go to the, buy toilet roll for a month. But you've got to be planning ahead. And I don't mean just on foodstuffs and just because of coronavirus. You know, this week it's coronavirus. Next week it's chicken flu, bird flu. 
Next week, it's recession. The month after that, it's an asteroid. The month after that, the aliens are landing. Whatever that happens to be, and by the way, there is an order. Uh, there's a really good book, uh, which is a bit kind of out there, and it talks about despot, um, despot uh, dictators, uh, asteroids, and then aliens. That is the way. Uh, I think one of those was a virus, by the way. Uh, so it was despots, asteroids, viruses, and aliens. This is kind of the new world order and how the how the governments are going to take over the planet by creating this stuff. So I have no idea. You can be on the verge of stuff and think, oh, that's a bit like weird. Or you can be on the verge of stuff and go, yeah, that's definitely happening. I, I don't know. Who knows? I have no answers. I don't know if 9-11 was a conspiracy theory or not. If Princess Di was a conspiracy theory. Who on earth knows? Maybe Tupac is alive and is playing poker with Elvis. Who the hell knows? But it's not my job to anticipate what's right and what's wrong. My job is to anticipate what is best for my family and what is best for you as well, by the way, because I want you to survive everything that life is going to throw at you. Uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, it was climate change. 20 years ago, it's climate change. Today, it's climate change. In 50 years, it'll be climate change. In a million years, it'll be climate change. Who the heck knows? But your job is to anticipate what might happen and plan and prepare for it. Uh, let's just see what Tony's saying. I uh, forgot about that. Uh, we've, we've also got two or three months of kitchen rolls and loo rolls. Awesome. I thought it was funny. I saw people buying hand wipes going, ah, oh, I'm buying hand wipes. And they'll be not laughing when the toilet is uh, blocked. Uh, we just had to deal with that with a tenant who was flushing hand wipes. Uh, and we're like, dude, that's cost £200. You're paying for it. Anyway, so just be aware of that. But your job is to anticipate what the problems might be and then build a plan around preparing for it. Now, you can't plan for everything. Admittedly, you can't plan for everything, but you can plan for most things. We know a recession's coming. Like, think about that for a second. We know a recession is coming. We don't know when it's coming, but we know there's going to be a recession at some point in the next 20 years. Now, think about that for a second and then think, OK, we know a recession is coming. What can we do to offset a recession? What products do we need to have? Have I got a, an online training course that will bring in 500 to 1,000 pounds every single month that will just offset some of that worry. And if you haven't, then you need to make one. And we've got the rapid course creation program for that, 27 quid. But your job is to uh, understand what's coming and to prepare for it beforehand. We know that, that cars are going to be like fuel cars of gas, uh, of oil and uh, diesel uh, and petrol. Those cars are going to be eradicated in the next 10 years okay you're not going to be able to buy a new petrol car in 10 years we know that this is happening and you know i've got shares in tesla for example tesla by the way is going to take over the world and if you can't see that it is happening wait till his hgv truck hits the marketplace wait until uh the solar panels are on everybody's roof and everyone's got new solar panels instead of tiles wait until that happens it's like a 33 percent more expensive buying a normal roof like that stuff's coming mainstream wait until everyone's got a tesla wall we know it's coming right your job is to anticipate that this is, stuff is coming and make the right decisions and I, I don't need you to be able to tell the future because not many people can do that accurately but we know that some of this stuff is coming and we you know, look at some stuff in the past look at amazon look at apple we knew you know now i'm older and i'm able to look at that it was so obvious that this stuff is happening and you look at something like tesla Tesla's going to take over the world. It's so obvious that that stuff is happening too. Your job is to anticipate and to plan everything in advance to make the best choices that you can. We know that if you're carrying large amounts of credit card debt or any credit card debt, that is a bad place to be. We know that. If you've got car loans, that is a bad thing to have. If the car loan is being paid for by money that's earned by you going in and exchanging time. I was just this week actually looking at a Lamborghini, and I know we shouldn't be buying this stuff, but it was 80 grand, a bright yellow one with no roof, a Lamborghini, a Gallardo Roadster, and I was looking at that. I can't help myself sometimes. My wife just looks at me like rolls her eyes, like, you know, you're nearly 50. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I'm like 21, you know, I feel 21. Um, and I'm looking at this, and there's a difference because my income comes from my property, which is cash flowing from other people going to work. It's not cash flowing from me going to work. I can buy a Lambo for 1,500 quid. All that is easily covered by my cash flow coming in from my property. 
I could do that if I want. I, I, I don't have an issue with that. I have an issue with people going out and buying a Lambo when they're having to earn £100,000 a year at a job. It's crazy. You can't do that. We know that that's a bad thing to do, and yet people are still doing it. People are going out and having um, uh, spending money on credit cards and having retail therapy because they're depressed, getting because they're in debt, spending money on a credit card. I've been there myself, by the way, and I know how it feels because I've done it. And then buying more stuff that gets them into worse debt, which means they have to buy more stuff to feel better and gets them into worse debt. We know that that's the path of uh, of the path that's going to ruin you in five or ten years' time. And it's really hard getting off that. We know that. We know that eating donuts and chocolate and crisps, he says, touching his tummy, I've uh, put on loads of weight. But I fasted for the last 47 hours. I ate last night and I'm going to eat again tomorrow. I'm back to fasting, thankfully. But we know that that's not a good plan. And yet we still do it anyway. So this is the key. Get the plan. Get it written up. Get it into an action plan. I've still got my, uh, my this is my goals for week starting. Uh, this is lined up, this is for me to fill out for next week, so I know what the plan is. Um, you know, we're planning everything. And if you're at home, either enforced or self-enforced, then you need to start planning what you want to happen and when. If you're going to create a training course, so we're at the start of March, and you go, okay, Dan, I'm going to buy your rapid course creation. Yes, please do, 27 quid. Uh, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to sit down this month. I'm going to write down my course. I'm going to record my course. I'm going to release it on the 1st of April. Awesome. You've got three weeks in which to do that. Now you can go ahead and start planning the process for that. So now you've got an asset and then you can start selling it. And do you know what? I, I was saying it's just this morning that I was having coffee with Richard because the basketball was all shut down uh, due to a festival that we've got, which we're not going to for coronavirus, but other people are. Um, but we're planning everything. The idea is that you have an asset. And when you sell an asset, even if you just make four sales a month, every month at 27 quid, I will take that. Is that uh, 27 quid? Is that 108 pounds? I think it is. I will take that every single month off just one product. I would love to do that. Because if you're doing that, that's a thousand pounds every year. It's at least a thousand pounds every year. Now you have, it, you go out and make 30 different courses and you're making a thousand pounds every year off each one. There's 30,000 pounds a year. That will cover your monthly income. Now imagine that for a second. At just one, one sale every week of one course, this is where the planning comes in. But you've got to see the bigger picture for what it actually is. My plan is to make lots of courses. I remember first starting up in property. I wanted 31 properties. That was my that was my be all end all. That was my absolute target. OK. And the reason for that is how many days are in a month, like the longest months? How many days are in those months? 31 days. I wanted 31 properties because I wanted to get paid every single day for the rest of my life. Some days. In February and days that have 30 days, I would get paid twice. Imagine that. That was my target of having 31 properties, and we superseded that. So the next bit then, like on training courses, was what if we had 52 training courses? Well, what if you, why would you have 52 training courses? Well, 52 weeks a year. If you could sell uh, one course every week and you had 52, let's just do the maths on this. I've not done the maths on this, uh, but let's run it now. So if you had 52 training courses and each training course was 27 pounds, that's 1,404 uh, uh, pounds every single week. If you sold one training course every week, times it by 52, it's 73,000 pounds a year just on creating courses and selling them. That's why we want to do it. And that's exactly what we are doing. We've got more training courses coming. And by the way, not all training courses are 27 quid. Some are going to be seven. Some are going to be 97. Some are 200. And there's upsells and downsells and cross-sells and all the rest of it. But this is all about planning. What are you going to do when you're going to spend that time at home and people go, oh, I'm too busy. Uh, you know, I'm going to lose all my income if I have to work from home because I'm hands-on and my customers need to be hands-on. I'm fixing washing machines. Great. Well, how about if you make a a training course on washing machines or whatever that happens to be or whatever that needs to be for you. Well, what if, what if you create a training course on how to fix uh, Bosch and Indesit and this, that and the other? And so show people how to make other, uh, uh, how to make money so that they can start up a part-time business as well. There's all sorts of training courses that you could create. And this isn't just about tra creating training courses. This is about you going out or staying in actually, about you staying in and working out Where's the money going to come from to finance my next five years? What if you created 
every month for the next 12 months a brand new training course, okay? And then in three years' time, you'd have, what, 36 training courses? Imagine that. Now imagine if you could do that every, uh, every month you created two training courses. In 36 months, you've got, what, what is that? Is that 60, 64 training courses? Like, think about that for a second. And now you're starting to push them. And the stuff that you created three years ago, in three years' time, the stuff you created three years ago, you're still selling, but you're still making more training courses. Or you're still planning your future. You're still working out, okay, this training course will sell off, uh, buy off or pay off this credit card. This online training or this live training, a mastermind group where people come together, and that income is designed to either pay off this course or pay off this car or this is our holiday fund. How many, uh, how many ninety-seven pound training courses can we run every year? So let's say we run four, uh, and let's say we sell thirty, because uh, it makes it easy. So that's three thousand uh, pound a quarter, twelve thousand pounds a year. Great. What are you going to use that twelve grand for? Well, it's a grand a month on average. Is that making a holiday once a week, going away somewhere, going overseas? Is it, is it paying your mortgage down? Like, what is that? And this is all part of a planning that you need to instigate into your life so that in five years' time, you get to where you want to get to. Because this is the problem. People are where they are today. They plan for the month, but they don't plan for the year. They don't plan for the next five years. And they don't plan for the next 10 years. And they wake up in 10 years and they look back. And they've blinked and they've gone, wow, where did that last 10 years go? And if you don't think this is going to happen, blink your eyes, look back at the last 10 years. What the hell was I doing? I, well, I actually know what I was doing for the last 10 years. But when I was 37, I was broken, kids were abducted, single. Like, like we spent a lot of time and effort planning to get us to this stage, now living overseas, now happily married, now with a new child, like she's five now. Uh, living next to a med we planned the whole lot okay and the reason why we're living that life today is because 10 years ago i didn't have anything else i i had the property thank goodness touch wood i had the property because that carried me through but this was a decade of lost income for us uh, uh because we were concentrating on family court and social services and child abduction and all this stuff we literally lost 10 years of really good solid old-fashioned focus on making a lot of money Luckily, now we're out of that, and, and that's the direction which we're going. So the next 10 years, and I'll be 57, and I'm like, God, 57's old. But it won't be, because when I'm 67, I'll look back at 57 and think, oh, I was so young when I was 57. Um, <laughs> it's just the way it works. But you've got to start planning what you want. And one of the first things that you've got to start planning is how much money do you want every single month? And you've got to start planning why do you want that? And most people, when they plan this, they go, well, I want 10 grand a month, and I want you know, uh, I want to be traveling the world. And it's like, we do all this fancy stuff. But if, you, if you're earning 10 grand a month, the bit that's missing is I want to invest five grand into generating more money. Okay, so, you know, 60,000 60, a year is 5,000 a month times 12. 6% is what you'll get from at t as a dividend. So 6% of uh, 60,000 pounds. Is that 10 grand? I can't do the maths. My maths is better. Whatever maths is on that, less than that. Five grand, whatever it is. But that money then goes into generating more cash. This is where you want to be. You've got to be planning into your future. You want to earn 10 grand a month, great, but don't spend the whole 10 grand a month on buying a boat, living in a nice house and traveling. You know, if you're going to do that, you need to earn 20,000 pounds a month because 10 grand should be on lifestyle and the other 10 grand should be going into buying assets that are going to grow with you. If you look at um, uh, Warren Buffett's income, it goes like that and it goes up. And then by the time it gets to 70 and 80, it's woof. It's up here. That's why Warren Buffett is so wealthy today, because Warren Buffett made uh, 95% of his wealth in the last 10 or 15 years. Like I don't know if that's quite accurate, but it's more or less accurate. He made most of his wealth. Uh, by the time he was 55, like he was pretty poor in relation to where he is right now. He was like, he was just a billionaire. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to the, I don't know how many billions he's got right now, but 25 billion, whatever it is. Um, but he was relatively poor compared to where he is now because he invested in stuff that was going to give him cash flow every single month. And he planned that. And he planned it by reading, what, 400 different um, uh, financial reports and got to understand financial reports. I look at a financial report today and I do not understand it. I pay someone, I've got someone who, who looks at those reports for me. Warren can look at it and it's like, 
for Warren, it's like a, an instruction manual to tell him. It's a story. It tells him what the company has done. But he plans that. He's, his plan is to keep reading, and he keeps reading to this day all these different plans. That's why he's Warren Buffett and I'm not, okay? But it comes from planning. And if you've got an enforced stay at home for whatever reason, this week it's Corona, next week it's aliens, the week after it's asteroids, whatever. If you've got an enforced stay at home, you should be utilizing that work, that time, to implement time management, goal setting, income dreaming, implement your perfect day. What do you want your perfect day to look like? All of this has to be implemented so that then when the self uh, quarantine is finished with, you've now got an action plan for the next five years and you're going to hit the road running and you're going to be very, very successful in the next five years because you're the one that's done the planning, whereas the other people haven't. And they're just panicking about this, that and the other. They've got no panic. Pan uh, they've got no stocks. They're just panicking. They've got the toilet roll. They're panicking. They're blaming everybody else because everyone else has panic bought. When actually we've, we just prepped. There's still lots of toilet roll available on the uh, I can't remember talking about toilet roll, but there's lots of toilet roll on our shelves where we are because we, you know, we've prepped. We're not taking somebody else's last toilet roll. There's plenty more toilet roll still to come for us in the next couple of weeks if it needs to be, uh, and for everybody else. We're not panic buying. We're prepping. When you're at home, self uh, self quarantined, you're not panicking. You're uh, planning. This is the key that's going to make you far more successful than everybody else. Okay, that will do us for today. Hope you had a good one. Uh, we're going to catch up with you on Monday, Business Growth Show. Come and join me for that. Hope you have a wicked weekend. We're going to Barcelona for the weekend, which I really don't want to do. We're going to see Dancing on Ice, Frozen 2, which will be really good. I'm going to go and wear my hazmat suit just to scare everybody else. I thought that was quite funny. Not really. Um, but I don't really want to go. But anyway, we've got to go. Uh, corona is worrying me a little bit. Uh, so let's just go hang out with 50,000 other people that are coughing and spluttering. That'll, that'll help. Um, anyway, we're going to go do that. I hope you have a good weekend and stay safe out there, people. Uh, <laughs> we'll speak to you on Monday. Have a good one. Take care. Hey, it's Dan here. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please click like or subscribe to the entire podcast.